Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and we're going to be talking about two technical terms you've probably come across if you've ever searched for flashlights. That is color temperature and color rendering index or CRI. Color temperature is in a nutshell a tint that might be associated with a light source such as an LED. In other words, I'm going to turn on two lights here. And one of them is probably going to have a tint to it. And you're probably going to say the one on your left has a bluish tint. That's because this is considered a cool white. Conversely, a warm white would be this color. This is an old fashioned incandescent lamp in this flashlight. It comes from a scale called the Planckian locus. I'm not going to get too technical on this. I'll put a link to in the description about it so you can read about it a little bit further. And overlaid on that is what's called a Kelvin scale, which is a logarithmic scale. But generally it's a, a two color strip. It starts out yellow on one end and gets brighter and brighter till it turns to white. And then it starts to turn blue. So anything on this yellow side, if it has a yellow tint to it, we call it warm white because we generally associate yellow with being a warm color. Conversely, everything on the right is considered a blue and we call that a cool white because we associate blue with being cold. In terms of the Kelvin scale, now even though we're talking about temperature, we're not talking about heat in the sense of, you know, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Although there is a Kelvin temperature scale for that purpose, we're talking about uh, color temperature, which is not a degree. It is simply a number and the Kelvin. So there is no such thing as 4,000 degrees Kelvin. There is no such thing as 6,500 degrees Kelvin. It is simply 4,000 K or 6,500 K. There is no little circle. Anything that's in the yellow tint is considered a warm white. Anything in the blue is considered a cool white. And if you get far enough into the blue scale, you will be into what's called daylight, which is what the color of the sky is at midday. The problem with a lot of flashlight manufacturers, this one for instance, there is no information about this either on the packaging or even on the manufacturer's website, not only lumens, but color temperature. No idea what color temperature this is. Now, if you just want light, you just say, I want to be able to see something, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But if you learn to understand the warm white, cool white, and the true white, or what's sometimes called natural, neutral, or even normal, I've seen the word normal used in a couple, or at least one manufacturer's website, it's a true white light. Some people prefer a, a warm white, which is the yellow side, because it's a comfortable light. It's a soothing light. It's relaxing. It simulates the firelight. It simulates the old fashioned incandescent lighting, which is about 2700 K. They like that because it's relaxing and soothing. Other people like a cool white. They like the crispness and the clearness and the clarity that sometimes it can give. There are some that say that a cool white, all else being equal, a cool white is brighter. I don't know about that. I, I take it at face value that, you know, they say, I'm, you know, I haven't made up my mind. I don't have a set of cool white and warm white light sources that are matched in terms of their light output to see if I can say, oh, that does look brighter or I don't see any difference. I don't have a way to test it. I've just heard anecdotal evidence to that. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. Myself, I prefer a 5000 K light. I'm putting 5000K lighting in my house. That's what I'm shooting under here now. Uh, this is 5000K. This is 5000K. I like them because they're color neutral. If I was shooting under incandescent light, even though my camera would automatically change it, this is what I would look like if I was shooting under incandescent lighting, say, 4000K. This is the actual color that I would be, you would be looking at. The reason it's showing up is because I am not using the camera's automatic white balance. I'm doing this digitally. Further down the, on the scale, the Kelvin scale, 
I can make it look like I'm actually shooting under incandescent lighting. This is about 2700K. This is what I would actually look like if my lighting was incandescent. It would look this yellow. Cameras automatically adjust for this, make it white. Our brains automatically assume that it's white and we think it is and we don't ever notice it. But this is what you're actually looking at when you're under incandescent lighting. Conversely, I'm going to come back to a normal lighting. The background here should be white. My walls are white, so they should look white. So let's go into the blue side of the scale. This is what it looks like about 6000K. You can see a little bit of bluish cast. And again, a lot of people like this. Myself, I don't, but a lot of people like this color. Some people like it so much that they go a little bit higher to like 7000K or 6500K. They like that crisp blue tint to it. To me, it looks too sterile, like an operating room. I prefer natural light. This is all 5000K lighting. The lighting in my house is 5000K. This is a north facing window, so the light coming in it is about 5200K. And these are 5000K LEDs. I like them because they are color neutral. They don't produce a cast. So hopefully that explains color temperature. Color rendition index is a different animal altogether. What that means is the ability of a light to reproduce a col all the colors accurately and truthfully. So in other words, here is, and I'm going to throw it up here on the screen, here is a true color chart. The colors that you see here on your screen now are true colors. The top row should be a series of white to black from left to right. If there's any tint, it's either because of the YouTube's algorithm that they use to convert my video to upload, or it could be the fact that you don't have a, a uh, calibrated monitor. When you get into a poor color rendition, or low CRI. CRI is a linear scale from 1 to 100 or 0 to 100. I don't remember which, but it tops out at 100. The lower numbers, 0, 10, 20, have very, very poor color rendering. There are maybe some shades of a hues of a color that simply are, don't show up at all, or they're very, very muted and very, very dull and very, very unsaturated. For instance, here is a an image that... Uh, this same color chart under a, let's say, an 80 CRI light source, you can see the colors are starting to become less, less vivid. They're muted. They're, they're kind of murky and muddy. Here's the same color chart at 100% CSR or 100 CS CRI, and again, at 80. So let's go back to our 100 CRI, and we're going to compare this to like a 50 CRI. This is, you know, a lot of people would be unacceptable to be looking at colors like this. The reason this is important is if color is important to you in, the, in, your, in what it is you do. Um, I chose a 5000K with a high CRI. Both of these are either 93 to 95 CRI. And I don't really need that color rendering index. I don't need it but it's nice to know that I have the ability to do it. If you want an idea of an absolutely poor CRI lighting, if you ever notice those orange street lights and security lights on the side of buildings that just have this sick orange color to it, those are high pressure sodiums. And they have such a poor, poor color rendering index and they are so orange that colors sometimes don't show up. In fact, here's the same color chart under a simulated high pressure sodium lamp, you can see the orange overcast, or the over orange color to it. Many of the colors, especially the blues and the greens, don't even show up. This is why if you have a blue or a green car and you park in a parking lot that has these high pressure sodiums, your car will look black simply because those lamps do not put out anything in the blue or the green part of the spectrum. So there's no blue or green light to even reflect. So a blue 
or a green car may look absolutely black. Hopefully this has helped you understand color temperature and color rendering index. Basically the color temperature is the tint, warm white, neutral, natural, normal, or warm white, yellow, white, or blue. I'm not saying you have to make uh, my choice, my choice is 5000K, you can choose whatever you want, as well as color rendering index. Anywhere from 75 to 90 is probably acceptable for most people. You get above 90, it's going to cost you a little more, but sometimes it's worth it. I could see somebody whose work is color critical, an artist, painting, or a photographer, or somebody in the medical field. Maybe color might be critical to them to diagnose a disease. It's kind of hard to see if somebody's eyes are yellow from jaundice if your light is yellow. Something like that. So there's probably a lot of situations where the color rendering index is very, very critical. Probably for most of us, it's not that great of a deal when we're out there in the field camping or backpacking or hiking or what have you. But again, it's nice to know that if you get a high CRI light, it's nice to know you have that ability so when you are looking at a color, it's as faithfully reproduced as it can. Color temperature and CRI, or color rendering index. Hopefully I've explained to those to you. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share on my videos. This is Backpack Hat coming at you with this, vid, uh, this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail.